Okay, so we left off talking about D. Empirical rule. What are the three percentages associated with our empirical rule? Do you remember? Front page of the notes. What are the three percents associated with our empirical rule? 68, Yeah. 68, 95, 99.7, yes? One standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations from the mean. And then the whole curve is 100%. Okay. We had worked on this second example here about SAT scores, and we we're working on D. I just want to kind of review a little bit. Find the proportion of students who earned SAT math scores between 266 and 629. Okay, and I know, you know, this is obviously from seventh hour yesterday, so different classes may have done things slightly different. Um, 266 to 629. Well, we know what? 387 to 629 is 68%. And then the key is how much is that piece, right? Okay, that, at least that's one way to do it. So, again, I don't remember exactly how your class talked about it, but one option in my brain would be if we take 95 minus 68, what is 95 minus 68? 27. Now, I'm going to erase this. This was from something else. Maybe I'm not going to erase it. Gosh. Um, and so... In these middle two, we have 68%, yes, which is 34 and 34, or combined, 68%. 95 minus 68, so 95 minus 68 leaves 27%. What do we know about that 27%? You divide it by two, you're at 13.5, and that means there's 13.5% there and 13.5% there. This is one way you could do this, yes? Okay, because then we're doing 68 plus the 13.5, and that gives us the 81.5. Okay, that's one option. Okay? I don't remember, as I said, I don't remember exactly what you guys were telling me to do yesterday, but thoughts, questions? You want to talk through other ways? Okay, so empirical rule, um, those two examples there are, you know, your examples to help you work with those percentages, right? Work with those percentages, and remember one of the things we did yesterday is we broke down all the percents, yes? So you can always, those work for every single normal distribution curve. You can always use those, okay? Okay, Moving on to talk z-scores, okay? Z-scores are our other topic for the day. And what a z-score does is it allows us to compare between two different topics, okay? So the z-score counts how many standard deviations a data value is above or below the mean. It divides the difference from the mean by the distance of a standard deviation. Z-scores can be used with any distribution, whether it is normal or not. And so what they do is they give us the ability to compare between two normal distribution curves. So, for instance, we're going to talk about how we can use a z-score to compare, in this example, an SAT score and an ACT score. Okay, two high school tests that have different scoring scales. So, you know, did someone, you know, is that score on the SAT better or is that score on the ACT better? So that's what we're going to look at here. So Ella and Alicia are comparing scores on their college entrance exam. Ella's SAT score is 1380. Alicia's ACT score is 32. Okay, who scored better? That's what we're looking at here. The mean SAT score is 1,000 with a standard deviation of 200. The mean ACT score is 21 with a standard deviation of 5. And we're going to answer who has the better score. And how does an SAT score of 1120 compare to an ACT score of 23? Now, notice I put two curves here, yes? And you guys, when you guys are doing stuff in Savas, you may have to kind of set up your own curve on your scrap paper or whatever. But let's set up these curves. Um, let's talk SAT. How do we set this SAT up? 
What do we remember from yesterday? What goes in the middle? Yeah, mean SAT is 1,000. So 1,000 goes in the middle. And then where do we go if we're going to the right? Standard deviation of 200. So each line represents 200, yes? So this next line is going to be what? 1,200, because 1,000 plus 200. What's the next line? 1,400, because you're adding 200. And the third line? 1,600, because you're adding 200. What if we go the other way? Subtract 200, so 1,000 minus 200 is 800. Subtract 200 again, we're at 600. Subtract 200 again, and we're at 400. Okay? So that is our SAT scores. And where is Ella? Yeah, she's just below 1,400, yes? So like if we want to think about where Ella is, I'm going to say approximately there. Okay. Ella is approximately there at 1380. Give or take, you know. Okay. Let's set this other one up for ACT. What do we know about ACT? Mean ACT score is? 21, so we're going to put 21 in the middle. And now what? Okay, standard deviation of 5. So if we go to the right, 21 plus 5 is 26. Plus another 5? 31 plus another 5? 36. If we backtrack to the other way, we are subtracting 5. 21 minus 5? 16 minus 5, 11 minus 5, 6. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, we've been alternating between 1s and 6s. What just happened here? Okay. Now, so did not hear anything. Okay. Um, what do we know about who are we talking about here? Alicia. Okay, first it was Ella's SAT score was 1380. Alicia's ACT score is 32. So just above 31, yes? So about there. And this is Alicia's score, yes? Okay, guys. Now, our first question is, who has the better score? Why, Alicia? She's a little bit farther. In relation to, we have what? We have our mean, and then we went... One standard deviation and two standard deviations. And Ella is right before two standard deviations, yes? Whereas Alicia, we have our mean, one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and she is a little bit past two standard deviations, yes? Now, this is also where we can compare their z-scores. Okay, by looking at z-scores, a z-score gives them one value that is comparable then. Okay, so if you use, we're going to use this right here, okay, to find our z-score. If we find the z-score for Ella, you take the data value, which what was her value? 1380. You subtract the mean, what was the mean for the SAT? 1,000, and then you divide that by the standard deviation, which the standard deviation on the mean was 200. So do that math. 
1380 minus 1,000, and then dividing by 200. Should be gain 1.9. Now, think about that z-score. Does it make sense? 1.9 is a little bit below 2. So it tells you that she is 1.9 standard deviations from the mean. Let's do the same thing over here with Alicia's z-score. Her data value, which what is her value? 32 minus the ACT mean, which was 21, divided by the standard deviation of 5. 32 minus 21 divided by 5. 2.2. 2.2 makes sense. Her score is a little bit past the second standard deviation. Okay? So, I haven't written the answer, but who has the better score? And we said that was Alicia. We've given our proof, haven't we? Okay? Um, I'm going to say Alicia, her score is more than two standard deviations above the mean. More than two standard deviations above the mean. Okay? And again, the Z score is your comparison there as well. Okay, a Z score of 1.9 versus 2.2, .2, those are on the same scale. Okay? SAT, ACT, you're kind of comparing apples to oranges. Z scores, we're comparing apples to apples. Okay? Okay. We have one more question on this particular problem. B, how does an SAT score of 1120 compare to an ACT score of 23? Well, if we look on the graphs, what do you know? SAT score of 1120 is where? Somewhere there between the mean and one standard deviation, yes? ACT score of 23, where is that? Somewhere here between... 21 and 26, yes? Now, you can probably ballpark which is which is better. But how do we officially figure out which is better? We look at their Z scores, yes? Okay, so if we compute their Z scores real quick, um, I'm going to look at the SAT. So the SAT Z score, what am I subtracting on top? Eleven twenty, one thousand one hundred twenty minus the mean of one thousand dividing by two hundred. You guys, this is why I said have the calculators out. Yes, zero point six. Okay, so SAT has a Z score of zero point six. Okay, ACT. How do we find the ACT Z score? Okay, the value of 23 minus the mean of 21 divided by the standard deviation of 5. 23 minus 21 divided by 5 is 0 0.4. So now we have an ACT Z score of 0.4. How does this compare? Okay, the SAT 1120 score has a higher Z score and thus is a little bit better. Not a lot, right? But a little bit better. This is where Z scores come in handy, when they're close and you just can't tell. Okay, so 
The SAT score, 1120, has a higher Z score. and thus is better. Okay, so z-scores. Remember that as a comparison. You've got your formula here. It's a very easy formula to use, isn't it? Um, just make sure after you subtract that you hit equals before you then divide, right? Okay, make sure you subtract before you hit equals. Okay, next page. On our last page, okay, we're going to talk about using a z-score um, to compute percentage. We're going to talk about how we can compare these percentages, but how we get to these. So when you calculate the z-score for a data value, you're finding its corresponding value, corresponding value on the standard normal distribution. So it talks about how many deviations it is, right? Now, the standard normal distribution is the normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, okay, which is basically what we were relating it to, is how many standard deviations above. Um, remember, total area under the curve is 100%, yes? If we start talking um, in terms of decimals instead of percents, it's going to be one. Okay. The percentage, of, the percentage of values less than or equal to a particular, particular data value is equal to the percentage of the total area under the distribution curve for that population to the left of the data value. This percentage is called the percentile of the data value. The percentage, area, the percentage of area to the left of a data value is equal to the area to the left of the value z-score under the standard normal distribution. Okay, so I know that's a lot to read there, but the key, the percentage of area to the left of a data value is equal to the area to the left of the z-score, and that is under the standard normal distribution, okay? So that's when we talk about the standard normal distribution, that's where we're going to be finding the percentage. Now, to calculate the area under the curve of the standard normal distribution to the left of the z-score, you're going to use technology. Okay? We're going to talk about Excel in order to do that. It also can be done on a calculator, which I know how to do standard deviation on a calculator. I don't know if I know how to do this one on a calculator necessarily. Okay? But we're going to use Excel as our technology to be able to do this. Okay? So. Can we do the right No. Depending on, I don't have the test. I haven't gone as far as getting the test ready because I'll be after spring break. Um, but no, you won't need to be on the iPad. So. Okay. Let's talk about some gorillas. The weight of captive adult female lowland gorillas is normally distributed with a mean. Remember that little mu there means mean, 82.3 kilograms, and a standard deviation of sigma, which is standard deviation, 15.33 kilograms. First of all, calculate a z-score of Sasha, whose weight is 61.8 kilograms. So we're going to start with that and go from there. Okay. How do we find this z-score? Okay, so Sasha's weight, 61.8 minus the mean, which is 82.3, and then what? Divided by the 15.33. When you subtract, we get, I have negative 20.5 here. Dividing by 15.33. And what do we get? Negative 
They have 1.33724722288 is what I have written down. However, I don't, I have two decimal places as my rounded answer. So negative 1.34. Okay. As always, I don't necessarily know, I can't necessarily say exactly what Sabas will ask for. I don't remember necessarily, but you've got that negative 1.34. Okay, now, what does this tell you guys? A z-score of negative 1.34 means where is this? It's going to be on the left side, right? It's going to be a little bit more than one standard deviation below the mean. Okay, so between negative 1 and negative 2. Okay, now, here's where we're going to start talking about percentages because the question becomes... How can you use this score to find the percentage of captive adult female lowland gorillas whose weights, notice it, this is asking for less than or equal to Sasha's. Where are less than or equal to going to be on the graph? It's going to be to the left, yes? Okay. And so this normal distribution that we talk about calculates the area to the left side of the z-score. Okay, so this is where we're going to talk about doing the normal distribution. What was it? Normal distribution. Standard normal distribution. So, grab Excel. As previously, open up a blank workbook, right? Or open up the workbook you've been working in, whatever. You know, but open up a workbook. Okay, and I know mine got reset the other day, but if it hasn't, you're probably already in the formula tab, yes? But if not, we're going to go over to that formula tab again. And again, we are looking for the statistics piece. Okay, so mine is under more functions. You may be there, or it could, it's that little squiggle, right? And then this time... It is norm.s.dist, everyone, but basically representing normal standard distribution. I scroll right past it. Ooh, there we go. So norm.s.dist. Okay, we're going to click that one. Okay, with this. Notice in my equation bar it says norm.s.dist, and then in parentheses, it's z, comma, cumulative. So the first thing you're going to type is the z-score. What is our z-score? Okay, so negative 1.34 is what goes first. Then you go ahead and do comma, and then it takes it to cumulative. That cumulative just represents what is the total value under the distribution curve, okay? I honestly don't have any scenarios where it would be anything other than, we say, 100%, which is what in decimal form? That is 1. So I don't have, off the top of my head, any examples where that would be anything other than 1. So it's your z-score and then 1. That returns us a value when you hit enter, yes? Hopefully a value matching mine. 0 0.09012. Okay. That is decimal form of a percent. What percent is that then? About 9%. Okay. And so that is saying that about 9% of the gorillas are below her weight. Okay. Now, make sure you can get that value. Make sure you're getting it to work out. It says you've entered too many arguments for this function. Did you enter more than the negative 1.34 in the 1? <laughs> Are you getting the right one? Actually, 
Actually, it looks like yours just wants. <laughs> okay, go ahead and pick that again. It looks different. It's norm dist as opposed to norm. No. Okay, it doesn't have the dots. Why is yours? Mine didn't have the dots the other day. Didn't have the dots the other day? Okay, interesting. Everyone else? Did everyone else get it? I got it. I think I think Logan. His doesn't want the one. No. I don't understand why. I just, I just have it just I'm sure I <laughs> when it was showing up there, it just you know mine showed Z comma cumulative. It was what it wanted. His just showed Z. I got nothing. Okay. I think I need to go share with Patrick to figure it out. I think you're perfectly fine where you're at. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, some information. You write down whatever you want. But I'm going to write down that we were in Excel. Again, we went to formulas, right? And then one way or another, you went into statistics. You knew how to do this from the other day, right? It was either in the more functions or it was that little squiggle thing. that I can't seem to draw here. There we go. Okay. And we used its norm dot s dot dist is what you should have found, right? Are you with me? So when we did this, for most of us at least, norm dot s dot dist, Mine said cumulative, or Z comma cumulative. So I did negative 1.34 comma 1. I told you the cumulative is 1 every time. So I guess the fact that his doesn't want it doesn't really matter. We got the decimal of 0 0.09012, which changes to about 9% when you move that to a decimal form, okay? And keep in mind, when we're using this norm.s.dist, this is calculating this. We wanted the amount less than or equal to Sasha's score. So this calculates to the area to the left of the z-score. So I'm going to write a little note here to remind you. Calculates area to left of z-score. Okay? Okay. Right, however little or much of that you want to down. And we've got three more questions along the same lines to practice with. We need Excel Yep. So this next one, find the percentage of all values in a normal distribution. So notice it's normal distribution where Z is greater than or equal to 0.62. So what are we going to do on the iPad? We're going to go into... Norm.s.dist. What's the z-score we're working with this time? 0.62. So for most of us, we're going to type 0.62, comma, 1. And your calculator is going to give you an answer, right? Now, do you remember, you should at this point, you just used it, be able to go into recent. Did you get an answer like mine? Point seven three two three seven. What is that? Okay, seventy three, and I actually have it as seventy three point two percent. Okay. 
Now, what's the catch on this one? Okay. Normal distribution finds the area to the left of the z-score. What are we being asked to find? Right in there equal to, which means we want to find the area to the right. What am I going to have to do to finish this problem off? Subtract from 100. Because this right here is the area to the left. We were being asked, whoops, we were being asked for greater than. So you have to watch. Greater than, when you're asked for greater than, that's the area to the right. Okay, we want to know the values above. And so anytime we see the greater than, we're going to do 100 minus whatever we get. So 100 minus the 73.2 puts me at 26.8. And that would be 26.8%. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So just be aware. Greater than means we want to know to the right. Normal distribution finds to the left. So we have to compensate for that, right? Subtract from 100. Okay. Two more quick problems then. Find all percentage values in a normal distribution with the Z, what sign is that? Less than or equal to 1.85? Okay, so always pay attention to that sign. So on your iPad, norm.s.dist, and you're typing in what? One point eight five, comma one. Do I need to do this on my iPad, or you guys got it? Okay, I'm being told zero point nine six seven eight four. What is that as a percent? Ninety six point seven eight four, which means if I round it to one decimal place, ninety six point eight percent. Okay. First example, my answer was the answer. Second one I had to subtract from one hundred. Is this the answer? Or do I subtract from one hundred? Okay. We are being asked to find less than. Less than is to the left. Okay, less than is to the left. What does this normal distribution curve find? To the left. So at that point, you are good right there. Are we getting the hang of this? Yeah. Okay. Okay, one more. Find the percentage of all values in normal distribution with Z. What symbol is that? Greater than or equal to. So norm.s.dist. 0 0.48. Okay, that was a weird G. Okay. What's the calculator, or what's Excel give you? 0 0.68439. Convert that to a percent. Okay. 68.4 percent. Are we good? No. Yes. Okay. Norm.s.dist dot dot found the percentage to the left. What are we asking for? Greater than. We're asking for the right. So what do I need to do? Subtract from 100. 100 minus 68.4 is 31.6. If 
hardest part. Just pay attention to less than or greater than. Okay. Um, lesson 11.4 is out there in Savas. Okay. Um, there is a decent amount of z score questions on there, if I recall. And there should be, should be a little bit about the empirical rule as well. Okay.